Hey, hello and welcome to this quick tip by Flowmotion. And today it's all about the levels effect. Because maybe you have the same issue like I had before with the levels effect. When you bring it onto a layer, you now what to do? Do I bring in the blacks or is it whites? And why are there two sliders? So I'm going to show you a very easy method to understand the levels effect today. Because let me tell you what I used to do with the levels effect. I just played with it to see what I can do and so for example I would bring it out on this zebra here and then I would just try and look what this is doing, ah, maybe not like that, maybe even something like this or maybe like that, yes and now I have a result that looks fine to me. And honestly, the next time I'm opening an image and I want to do something with the levels effect, I uh, just start playing again. So, at one point in time, I just sat down and looked what the sliders are really doing. And this is exactly what I want to show you today. What does the levels effect do? You take the bottom slider to define the darkest and brightest area of the whole image and then you take the top sliders for their distribution. So actually really easy. So what I have created for you is a composition with a gradient ramp effect so it goes from pure black to pure white in a linear way. And now on top of it I have a levels effect. Let me twirl this down and I have just brought it beneath the composition and not like you would be used to on the side of the composition just to have it in a similar way because the levels effect also goes from black to white. And before I even start I set the clip output black and the output white to on. Because After Effects does it automatically to help you not to clip the colors but actually if you know what the levels are doing you're not going to clip them. What do we see here? We see that our image goes from pure black to pure white and we are just having a look at this slider at the moment. So when I want to change the ramp or brighten up the image later on, all I have to do is to define the range from which is my darkest point and which is my brightest point. For example, like that, if I want to have more of a flat image. So the first thing that you have to know is that you set your darkest and brightest color with this slider here. So now comes the top bar. What you see here is values from the darkest point to the brightest point. So this small arrow for the darkest point is a representation of this arrow. And this small arrow represents this arrow. So in between both of those arrows, so between the darkest and the brightest points, all the values are represented at the moment and they are all equally represented because we have a linear ramp from dark to white and in the exact middle there's our gray point and let's just play with that by offset it. So let's say we want to have a more darker image so we want to make our shadows more black in an image, darken them, so we can just bring the grays more to this side so we have way more dark information like so. Or let's just set it to black again. Our darkest point is now black but three quarters of the information of the whole image are the values from black to gray and then there's just a small portion of information that goes from gray to pure white. And you can bring this even further to see what this is doing. We have a little bit of information in the image for the whites and a hell lot information for all the black tones. So quick recap, what does the levels effect do? You take the bottom slider to define the darkest and brightest area of the whole image and then you take the top sliders for their distribution. So actually really easy. So now let's go back to our zebra. I'm going to reset what we have done. Or maybe even better, let me just take a screenshot and you can do that by clicking on that take snapshot icon. And every time you click on that button, the show snapshot, it will show that to me. So we have kind of a comparison. 
Okay, so now let's reset our levels effect and quickly set this up so we can see what we are actually doing. New solid and try to take the darkest color that I can find here. Then I'm doing the same thing again with the brightest color and now I'm doing the same thing two more times but this time I'm taking pure white and also a pure black one. And now let's bring out the levels effect again to our zebra layer. Now let's go back to our zebra layer and what we can see is that our darkest point in the image is already set to black, which is fine because we want to have a really nice looking black and white image. And also the white point is set by default to perfectly white. But we are lacking some information in the image. You see, there's no information for all the dark and the information just starts over here where we have this dark gray and the same is for the whites. This is why the darkest part isn't black and the brightest part isn't white. Let's just apply what we learned. We want to have the distribution. So let's take the first information that we have in the image and just map that to pure white, like so. Now all this information here is pure white. And let's do the same on the other end. All the information here we want to have as pure black. And now we can easily work on this. So all the gray tones in the middle on the snout of the zebra, maybe we just want to darken that to bring that more up front. And we can easily do that by giving more information between black and gray. So we have more information in the darker parts. And we can also bring in the whites a little more. So they are almost a little bit crushed in there. And now again, let's take a look at the snapshot what we have created before. And I would say this is what completely makes the difference. Now you can really think about what you want to achieve and achieve it. And maybe this is the best part in this tutorial to say thanks for watching. I really hope you learned a little bit. And if you did, why don't you just subscribe to my channel or write a comment down below what you liked and what you didn't like maybe, because then I can improve that for the next time. But now I wish you a lot of fun working on your images and working with the levels effect in After Effects.